and uh, the man with the keys over here, Mr. John Heinway. Walking away on the bass. top jazz players in Tucson, keyboards, saxophone, you name it, and he's here to talk about Marina Martindale's book, and so Malik, uh, tell us what you thought of Marina's book. Well, I've been very fortunate that I have met her in person, and I have read some of her product, and that is Reunion, uh -huh. and what I like about her book is what I so like about the music, it's very alive, vibrant, and just evokes emotion. And Reunion is a book you'll want to read. And, and, just, and you have two other books, right, Marina? Yes, I've got Deception and Journey, and I'm working on a fourth one as we speak. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's really a pleasure meeting you, Malik, and really thanks for stopping by and saying hi with us. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thanks. For her. Okay. Of flowing words. Well, thank you, Malik. All right, thank you. Hi, this is Mark. We're here with Glenn, and um, he's one of the top trumpet players here in Arizona, at least I think so, and a lot of other people think so. He also plays keyboards and saxophone and a and, uh, longtime friend of Marina's. And so, Glenn, uh, how, do, how do you like uh, uh, Marina's books and the whole concept? And I really like the way she writes, and I like the covers of her books also. I think they're very suggestive and um, they're romantic. Everybody needs a little romance in this day and age, but people are in so much a hurry, you know. When I play with the jazz band, I try to put everybody at ease so they can get into a meditative mood. And your books do the same thing. They draw people in. So I find that to be you know, something we have in common there. Yeah. And then also I, I like the fact that, that you like music also. Yeah. Well, music is an inspiration to me. You know, artists and writers kind of think alike, and music as an artist, in my own right, no pun intended, does inspire me. Exactly. And I heard a friend say once that art complements art, so yes, if you already does. understand the art of writing romance novels, then you certainly understand the, something about the art of music. Well. Yeah, and jazz is the music of romance. Exactly. So, you know, so we're very glad to write. So put on some jazz when you're reading one of Marina's books. Yeah, and, and Marina puts on jazz when she's writing books. Oh, that's excellent. Yes, so you know. And where can people hear you play around in Arizona? Well, usually I play every Sunday at the Old Pueblo Grill, and uh, that's where we are right now. Right. 
and uh, play different places too. I play with the Tucson Pops Orchestra, uh -huh. and uh, I play sometimes with uh, various big bands around town. Uh, played up at Piazza Gavi on Friday, oh, so it's great. kind of exciting. There's a lot of different things going on. Right now. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you stopping by and meeting with us and, and talking with Marina and me. And, and thank you very much, Glenn. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Same process that I went through as a writer, and I thought, okay, good. We share the same kind of crazy. This is good. So I can talk to them, I can relate to them, I can understand them, they can understand me, you know, and it's like, yeah, we're sharing the same crazy here. This is good. So because their creative process and my creative process are much the same, you know, the only interest is, the difference is they're more of a performing thing where, you know, the performance is over and done with, where mine is a little more tangible, it's a, it's a physical thing that you put in your hand by the time I'm finished with it. Although when they record a CD, then they have something tangible as well. So that's kind of why I hang out here. I've gotten to know people. I've gotten to, you know, make friends like you and friends like John and friends like Malik and friends like the other people. And my week really is not complete unless I'm down here listening to music. So. Yeah, it is, and it does. I usually will, on a typical Sunday night, I will come home, and I'll sit in front of my computer till about, oh, 12, 30, 1 o'clock, maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, because I'm that jazzed up after listening to y'all. So, you know, you do kind of feed my creativity as well. You know, and you never know, and then some of y'all walk up to me and say, hey, can I be a character in your book? <laughs> well, we'll see. It could happen. You may recognize yourself. You may recognize yourself. I have been known to do this. I'm so glad you yeah. have Miss Martin down here. Well, thank you. And, and I'm feeding Roscoe because it's really sad to see a musician starve. <laughs> you know, they're, they're up there, they're playing their hearts out, they're dying of hunger. So, you know, I feel bad for them, so I feed them. Now, I don't know if that's a mistake or not. I don't know what we would do without you. I don't know if I should be feeding them or not. It's kind of like, you know, they tell you not to feed the pigeons. Yes. You know. Well, we're not exactly but, pigeons. Yeah, but you're not exactly pigeons. Yeah. You're musicians. Oh, it is actually fantastic. I got through the first couple of chapters and I really couldn't put it down. It's just smooth, beautiful writing. And I think I'm going to be a big fan and read all of them. Yeah. And, and for people to get a hold of you for your uh, quartet or to see your band, where can they see you at? Well, they can see us here every Sunday night. At the Old Pueblo? At the Old Pueblo Grill. Every Sunday night from 7 to 10. Um, it's, uh, we, do, we tend to do concerts rather than sets. So our first set is a concert, then after that, musicians come by and they bring their acts, they're welcome to sit in, they just bring themselves, and they bring their ears, we're all happy. Yeah, well, it's great. And then I feed hungry musicians, too, and I don't know why. If I need a good snack, a good meal, if I always sit up before I play, then, I, then she also feeds me. Because it's really sad when you see musicians up there, and they're so hungry, you can see the tears in their eyes yes. as they're playing, <laughs> and they're eyeing your food. And, you know, I just have a soft heart, and I guess I just have to feed these people, you know. But she's even also a great writer, so. Yeah, even though that's true, you know, it's called, you know, because they do, we just support each other. Seriously, I come down here, listening to them kind of inspires me. I go home, I'll spend like two or three hours on the computer after I get home. So, you know, artists and writers think a lot alike. Our brain processes are much the same. We understand each other. We have the same crazy. But it's good crazy, not to be confused with bad crazy. That's, that's a fact. And yeah, we do have good crazy. There's always work to do. Um, yeah. uh, I know that uh, Marina here uh, gets up at 2.30 in the morning and starts writing. Marina's usually up until 2.30 2 in the morning, morning right? Yes. But uh, me too, I get an idea coming up, I get out of bed and, and um, I'm lucky to have a little practice room where I don't disturb any, anybody yeah. in the middle of the night. So I, that's what my ideas hit me. Yeah, it does. It's. I think we creative people, it's like our mind will come on at weird hours of the night. And, and tell me, you probably experience this too. You're, 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 it's the end of the day. You're so exhausted, your body is aching. Yes. You crawl into bed, and just as you're starting to go to sleep, here That's comes, what it happens. You know, Are you a night person? Is that yes. Yeah, I'm a night person. And then person. it's like, and then my next thought is, oh crap, I'm not going to get any sleep tonight. It's the curse of the creative mind. Right. You know, in your case, it's the drums. In my case, it's the computer keyboard. And I'm up for maybe another couple hours because if I don't and I go to bed, I'll wake up the next morning. Gone. Well, you got to capture that lightning in a bottle. You and do. That's, and that's absolutely. That is the uh, the main trick of it. Absolutely. And when you 
when you feel it coming, you gotta act. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll lose it. Yeah, and that's why writers and musicians get along so well. We get along we great, don't we? We have the same crazy. <laughs> so, thanks, Ross, for being a fan. Oh, thank you for being a fan. I'm so glad that you're yeah. here. And please, everybody, come on down every Sunday night here. Yeah. Uh, we have great jazz, great food. It's just a wonderful event for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. And thanks. it's free, but do feed the musicians. Oh, I'll, don't worry. Yeah, don't, they usually pass I'm around. To feed. They yeah. usually pass around a tip jar. You don't really have to buy their food, but right. you know. <laughs> anyway, help yourself. Oh, another one? Let me try this. Yeah, those are actually good. All right, well, that, that, worked, that worked out really well. Yeah. All so right. thank you, Roscoe. Thank you.